The following program is brought to you by Pizzop Productions. Oh, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to an all-new episode of the Totally Necessary Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Porter. Guys, I'm glad we are back with an all-new episode this week. What a week it was within professional wrestling, guys. I can't I can't say I'm happier to be here right now with you talking about WWE, okay? I think I think we can drop the voice a little bit there. Um, I, I I think we can go ahead and we can we can you know call the kid. I don't I don't know what's a what's a what's a good fucking phrase for that, huh? Monday Night Raw. I actually didn't think it was that bad, honestly. I watched the Hulu version on. In all honesty, I mean we all know that you listen to me every week. For all you new listeners out there, I watch the hour and a half Hulu version. So. It's pretty condensed down. A lot of times, the stuff we review on here, I don't even have to fucking deal with half that shit. Um, I would definitely... I thought this this week's Raw was a lot better than the week prior. Uh, but it appears a lot of people out there don't necessarily agree with my sentiment. But we can go ahead and uh, kick off the week that was professional wrestling, guys. We kicked off Monday Night Raw with Ronda Rousey and Natalia uh, taking on Nia Jax and Tamina Snuka. Um, I know I've been pretty hard on Nia Jax uh, the last, you know, couple weeks. Um, I got to give it to her. I got to break it down. I know last week I was really fucking hard. I went on a pretty big fucking rant about her. Uh, but I actually, her delivery is getting better. Um, kind of the soft, the softness and, you know, going a little bit slower in regards to her delivery and shit. I think it's really helping her. And, uh, I, you know, I really can't say too much bad about this segment, I guess, you know, it was, you know, it's again, it's, you know, Ronda Rousey continues to impress me as a professional wrestler. She continues to grow. Um, I, 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 I fucking, she's going to main event WrestleMania this year, next year. I guarantee it, dude. There's dude. It's happening. We know it's happening. It's fucking Becky and Ronda Rousey, hopefully, but you know, they're going to insert fucking Charlotte in there. Fucking. Don't even get me started on the fucking woo, dude. I'm so sick of that shit. I'm so fucking sick of that shit. So, you know, we see the the Riot Squad, Natalia storyline kind of play into this year. They uh, kind of make their presence known. Honestly, I kind of forget exactly how this match exactly went. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you the truth, dude. I watched this shit Tuesday. It's like most of the shit, dude, you just, it's in, in one year, out the fucking other, dude. Uh, but I, I, you know, in terms of what the segment was, I was, I was, I was pretty much fucking entertained in regards to it. Um, speaking of something, I, I, I'm definitely was not entertained by the week prior. I don't know why they're are uh, doing this all over again. Uh, we had Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, and Bailey in, in another open forum. So uh, this is actually something I did not have to fucking watch on the Hulu version. Luckily, they uh, they spared me this week, and I didn't have to fucking watch this shit again. Um, but you know, kind of looking through here, um, it more or less looks like it was another fucking beat down. Um, uh, apparently yeah, bliss cut him off and now it's a tag match would take place immediately after the break. Uh, so this led to Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Mickey James, uh, taking on Alicia Fox, which Bailey and Banks defeated James and Fox here. Uh, it appears they're probably going to be rolling out those women's tag titles at some point. Um, I do. You got to make, got to give all the, you got to give them everybody something to do. So, I mean, I, I can hear everybody out there. They're probably like bitching. You know, oh, you don't need more fucking tag time. Ti- you don't need more fucking titles on WWE television at this point. I mean, look, who, who pays attention to the cruiserweight championship? UK champion who? No, I know it's Pete Dunne. <laughs> you know, what fucking you get, you get the point, man. There's just so much content out there. It's just <clears throat> sometimes it's just kind of hard to you know keep up with what's going on and shit in the world of professional wrestling. But we saw Bailey and Banks defeat James and Fox here. Um, this led to the Lucha House rules, uh, Lucha House party versus uh, Scott Dawson, dude. I don't know. Again, I haven't seen one single fucking second of this shit. Um, I know in past the past weeks I've I, I made comments about how. 
you know, I wouldn't mind seeing this on the Hulu version. They're, they seem to be very quick uh, segments and whatnot. Um, I'm a fan of the revival. Um, from what I know, dude, Lucha House Party, sure, you know, I can, I can get down on some of those guys. I, you know, I just enjoy the matches. I mean, they're spot fest for a couple minutes here. It looks like Lucha House Party did defeat Dawson. Um, everybody's bitching about how the, the, the psychology is fucking off about the baby faces having, you know, the, the advantage on the, the heels, you know, thus making them de facto heels and the, the heels de facto baby faces in a sense. Um, I don't know, dude. I don't really give a shit that much. I mean, like, yeah, we can, we can break sticks and fucking stones and whatnot, but does it really matter at the end of the fucking day? No, not really. So why am I going to waste any more energy that I have than I have to outside of what I'm doing on this fucking review right now, uh, in regards to the Lucha House Party, uh, revival feud that's been carrying on for fucking six months at this point. Now, I know it's only been a couple weeks, but still it kind of feels like it's been, um, kind of ran its course, you know, but that's WWE today, dude. You see the same thing over and over and over. Speaking of seeing somebody over and over and not necessarily over in that sense, we had Baron Corbin promo, guys. Uh, so this is apparently Drew McIntyre appreciation night this past Monday. Uh, Drew uh, Baron Corbin, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's it's over. The, the fucking honeymoon's over, bitch. It's done. You need to get the fuck off WWE television now. Like I'm so sick and tired of this heel fucking GM bullshit and him jerking off Matt, Drew McIntyre in the middle of the fucking ring didn't really help the fucking cause this past Monday. Um, I, I, I don't mind Drew McIntyre. I love anything that he's really doing. And honestly, what him and Finn Balor are leading to in regards to the TLC match, because apparently that got announced this uh, this past week. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat looking forward to that. I, by the end of the night, I will actually give it, you know, and say that I, I somewhat enjoyed the continuity, not necessarily the continuity, but the continuation of the Finn Balor, uh, you know, gaining revenge on the heels for the beatdowns the past couple weeks. I mean, because, you know, because that makes sense. It makes sense that he's going to get fucking revenge on these assholes that took him and fucking Elias out and Braun Strowman, you know, within the last couple weeks. I mean, somebody's got to save fucking face. And I really hope, you know, coming out of this whole Roman Reigns fucking issue with him not being there and somebody got to take fucking that spot. I really wouldn't mind seeing Finn Balor take that fucking spot, dude. So, um, <clears throat> while albeit you know Baron Corbin being fucking annoying on the on the fucking the microphone here, um, I, I enjoyed Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler coming out, and uh, you know basically saying, "Hey, where's my fucking invite?" and calling Drew out. I mean the. the I mean, the way they got to, you know, the feud with Dolph and fucking, you know, Drew, like, I mean, we all saw it coming, right? We all knew it was going to end like this. I mean, we knew it was going to be this, like, oh, epic feud that takes us to WrestleMania. I mean, you know, I mean, I think Drew's, like, kind of in that hand, hand you know, hand basket where he's going to get a title run. I don't know if it's very soon, you know, how, but when it's going to happen. I mean, it's kind of inevitable at this point here. And unfortunately, Dolph Ziggler just doesn't fit into those fucking plans. He's unfortunately a good hand that can work with anybody, and we all have heard that over the years that you just don't want to end up, you know, a solid hand. You want to rise above that, and unfortunately, uh, that's just not happening at this point now. And I, I you know, it's sad, dude, because Dolph Ziggler, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what what the deal is. I think everybody was kind of getting behind him as a heel, but now he's a baby face again. It's just like ah, oh, too much, man. It's Big Show syndrome, bro. Too many fucking face turns, motherfuckers. Too many fucking heel turns. Fucking soap opera bullshit here motherfuckers uh so this ended up with the match obviously with Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre Dolph Ziggler got the win so we're gonna see the match again on Monday night I can almost fucking guarantee we're gonna see Drew McIntyre get his win back against Dolph Ziggler somehow fucking Finn Balor is gonna come out and cause shit which you know whatever I enjoyed and Finn Balor's um you know interference here so we're gonna we're gonna chalk this up to a decent segment at least in my opinion for the most part outside of the whole fucking wishy-washy breakup between McIntyre and Ziggler uh, we enjoyed um, Finn Balor's uh, involvement. Uh, so then we, we did see Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush interrupt Elias here. So apparently we are getting a, a Bobby Lashley Elias match at fucking TLC. Is what it is. I'm not. I mean, we saw the match last week. We've seen this match before, so it's not like we're getting anything fucking new here. Elias is extremely limited in the ring, but he needs the experience. So it's like, all right, I guess we're gonna do this. Um, I really kind of enjoyed how Leo Rush interrupted, uh, you know, Elias. There, I thought that was pretty well done here. Um, 
so so eventually though this will leads to uh, a beat down with Elias and Bobby Lashley. Eventually um, Elias gets the upper hand and then all of a sudden Leo Ru- or Bobby Lashley takes that. It was kind of fucking awkward because Bobby Lashley just like he he like crawls behind stage and, then, and you know Elias is like oh I'm just gonna barely follow you I'm just gonna tiptoe back there you know it's kind of stupid. He just walks back out and it kind of seemed like they were a little late doing something there because it kind of like there was a little bit of a gap in time frame. Uh, but ultimately we saw Elias. Uh, get one up on Leo Rush, thanks to Finn Balor, returning Finn Balor, who threw Leo Rush onto the stage that caused um, Leo Rush to get smashed in the back with a fucking guitar. So again, the baby faces are are getting their they're getting their revenge this week on the the evil dastardly heels that uh, you know kicked their ass a couple weeks ago. Uh, apparently, we saw the continuation of Bobby Roode and uh, Chad Gable versus Drake Maverick and AOP. I did not see any of this. Again, we saw the piss thing last week. So, in like terms of continuity for the Hulu version, anybody that's like a kid that's just, this is their only option has no fucking idea. And like, and again, it's internet age. These kids are probably smart. They just check the fucking results. Um, I don't know, man. I just, eh. I guess that's what we're going. With. I, I mean, I assume this match is going to be on the kickoff show or something like that. So, I mean, I, I I'm not. I don't really care that much. I mean, it's it's something. At least they're all on TV and developing their skills uh, one way or the other. Uh, but <laughs> I don't really give a shit about Drake Maverick peeing on fucking Bobby Roode's fucking, uh, you know, expensive robe. So I heard I heard a comment earlier this week where somebody made the comment. It's like, isn't he supposed to be some rich business guy? Like, why would he give a fuck if they ruined one fucking robe? He'll drop another $50,000 for it. Like, isn't he supposed to be some, like, rich, rich motherfucker? I don't fucking know, guys. So we did see uh, the rivalry between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Um, I know a lot of people were fucking shitting on Dean Ambrose's fucking entrance, but I kind of fucking dug it, dude. I kind of dug, like, because he needs a little bit of a change. I was actually hoping that uh, he would actually have whole a whole different fucking theme song and that they would just get rid of the old one. Uh, but motherfucker came out looking like Bane, though, dude. I mean, that's essentially what, you know, he was he was fucking, uh, you know, he was fucking going for it, felt like, in regards to that look there with the jacket and the fucking, the gas mask. Uh, kind of stupid how they, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess you just gotta let it play out. The fucking, the promos before, it feels like they've really kind of dropped the ball just in terms of this. It's more goofy than it is personal, you think, especially involving, you know, the Roman Reigns situation. It's like, this would actually be a blood feud, but it doesn't really feel like a blood feud. Fucking Dean Ambrose is fucking, you know, talking shit about people fucking smelling and bad in fucking cities which i'm not disagreeing i mean some of you motherfuckers out there need to take showers and shit but saying that you know it's not necessarily uh that blood feud that i think a lot of us were expecting so um eventually seth rollins did come out uh dean ambrose did get the beat down on seth rollins here uh i guess i'm looking forward to the match i mean i'm i, I think it's gonna be a good match I, I like Seth Rollins. I think Seth Rollins is like probably one of my favorite fucking wrestlers on the roster, at least on Monday Night Raw. Seth Rollins is like one of the one things I, I would say I look forward to seeing every single week. And I look forward to seeing Dean Ambrose most weeks. But it's just it's just sad though, you know. It's just, it's a fucking comedy act, dude. That's that's fucking all it is. Uh another thing I did not see, apparently Hulu does not give a shit about Heath Slater and Rhino. Uh long story short, Slater defeated Rhino and Rhino has been fired by Baron Corbin. So fuck Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin continues to uh, be a complete fucking asshole, and again, needs to get his motherfucking comeuffins, hurry the fuck up, Braun Strowman, all right, so we did see Finn Balor taking on Jinder Mahal, which this was one, a couple, you know, within the last couple months, this is another thing I wasn't fucking watching, because this is a match that we have seen before, uh, minus me, because again, they didn't include another Hulu version when they were promoting this shit for that mixed tag team challenge bullshit, um, so Balor defeated Mahal here, uh, this pretty is, is a, you know, I didn't see it, so, um, or did I see it? I don't know, did I see it? I did see it this week. Okay, guys, never mind. I'm fucking high. <laughs> so, sorry, I did see the Finn Balor Jinder Mahal match here. Okay, so, and again, it is what it is. Uh, Finn Balor matches are kind of all the same. You know, when I talk about I want to see him take that next step, it's like, come on, guys, let's let's uh, let's get outside that fucking, I don't know, man, I'm not a fucking wrestler. I mean, how the, f- I don't know, I feel like an asshole sitting here criticizing him for their fucking, you know, it's like, oh, you're, uh, you got a pimple, you got a pop there, nerd. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, fucking jeez, dude. It's like, you leave Finn Balor alone, Kevin. Come on. Step it back a little bit. Step it back. 
Uh, so then eventually, uh, oh yeah, that's right, because the opening match kind of like, I think the opening match was just kind of a schmoz, it seemed like, because yeah, they ended up, Natalia got thrown through the table, that's fucking right. Ronda Rousey teams up with Ember Moon versus Nia Jax and Tamina. Solid fucking match. I mean, it was a fun fucking match. And I really got nothing bad to say about Nia Jax this week, guys. I know, I, I think that may have been a, a running theme for a couple weeks there where I was just totally shitting all over Nia Jax and just calling her out for her stupid shit. But I gotta fucking, I gotta fucking give it to her for the last, you know, this last week in regard, last two weeks, I should say, in regards to her promos. Um, but yeah, that's, that was Monday Night Raw, guys. That was mon- motherfucking Monday Night Raw. So we opened up Tuesday Night Smackdown with Charlotte Flair and Asuka versus Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, which we had the contract signing between Becky Lynch, Asuka, Charlotte. Um, not much really to say. You know, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the contract signing. I thought it was, it was decently done. I don't really have anything bad to say in regards to any of the promos or anything. I mean, you know, um... Charlotte just fucking somewhat I don't know there's just something about her basically ripping her fucking dad off and it's just like I don't know it's just I'm not saying she's bad but it's just like the woo it's just annoying it's just fucking annoying I don't know I just want to see Becky Lynch slap the shit out of her I want to see Oscar beat the shit out of her uh, but you know it's obviously apparently um Becky Lynch hasn't been fully cleared to wrestle so that's why she ended up you know just hightailing it out of the fucking ring, which was fine. She ended up coming back. Uh, but we, we, we did see uh, Mandy Rhodes and Sonya Deville make their presence known, um, basically calling out Paige for not pushing them and pushing fucking Oscar and Charlotte Flair. It's like, bitches, you had your chance last week. You had your chance to win the Battle Royal, okay? Paige gave you that fucking chance, and here you are fucking shit up. You fucked it up, so therefore, get to the back of the fucking line there, Mandy Rhodes and Sonya Deville. But nonetheless, we see a tag team match set up here. Uh, interesting, you know, seeing... She, I'm, I'm glad to see Asuka in the main picture again. I'm a big fan of Asuka, so, like, I don't mind seeing her included in the triple threat match here. Um, her and Charlotte Flair teaming up was pretty fun, though. Uh, the match was fun. Like, I actually thought Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville did a really good job on the mic. Um, I think their in-ring skills are at least pretty fucking average up to where it's not bothering me watching one of their fucking matches, so... Uh, this was, it was pretty fun. Then obviously we saw, uh, Charlotte Flair and Oscar kind of get into it. Charlotte Flair basically mistakenly hit Oscar. Oscar came in, uh, nailed Charlotte Flair causing, I, I believe Sonny DeVille to get the pin over Charlotte. So good, you know, some, I mean, they got to build these people up, dude. These people got to You got to build up the, these other women. So you want everybody to be on that same level. So you want Sonya DeVille to be on the same level as Charlotte. You got to give them a win every once in a while. So, you know, this just obviously creates the dissension between the team. And thus, you know, we've seen this before. We saw it with AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. We saw it with, like, oh, it was with Shinsuke and fucking AJ earlier in the year. So, I mean, we've seen this. We're going to see it again. I mean, WWE is lazy as shit when it comes to their fucking writing. We've obviously fucking proved that. Uh, but nonetheless here, um, this sets up for next week. They did announce that it's going to be Asuka and Charlotte in a rematch from WrestleMania uh, 34 earlier this year, which I'm... Dude, fucking totally looking forward to SmackDown. SmackDown. SmackDown is like by far, even though we do see the same scenario, same matches, you know, week in week out as well. It's 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 a, it's a shorter show, um, and I I just I tend to enjoy it. I don't know. I enjoy the the the, the characters maybe just a little bit more on there. At least we're not getting, you know, Chad Gable fucking Bobby Roode versus AOP Drake Maverick fucking segment on SmackDown here. Uh, we saw a triple threat because, again, I was right, okay? So they are going to include, it's going to be New Day, Usos, and The Bar in a triple threat at TLC. Uh, so I was right. Um, I wasn't too sure what they were doing last week with the whole Miz fucking, you know, Shane McMahon. I didn't know if they were, like, leading to a match like that, but apparently they're going on slow burn for that, so that's not going to happen. At least at TLC. So this uh, was Cesaro, Xavier Woods, and Jay Uso in a fucking pretty badass fucking triple threat match here. Uh, Jay Uso actually picked up the win, dude. That was uh, that was pretty fun. Um, I enjoyed the spot where the New Day was uh, was uh, you know kind of getting. You kind of saw it just for a split second, but the New Day was getting down to fucking uh, to the Uso's music coming. Out. I was like, dude, Uso's music's pretty fucking badass. Like, I may have to throw that on one of these episodes, guys. So you know, it's it's pretty good. Uh, but this was a fun match, and I'm looking forward to the tag match at TLC. I think, you know, this kind of rivals Ring of Honor right now. I know they're going to have the Briscoes, the Bucks, uh, Young Bucks, and fucking uh, SoCal Uncensored, you know. So it's kind of cool because, the, the, you know, even though this match doesn't necessarily involve a ladder, and that'd be badass if they announced it as a ladder match, which why not, dude? I mean, it's TLC, so 
we get two fucking badass uh, ladder matches within the span of like you know 48 hours or whatever you know because like final battle is on the 14th and then TLC we're gonna have to turn right back around for the 16th too so we're gonna have a lot of fucking coverage coming up next weekend dude I mean fuck dude we're gonna be out with our regular normal you know Friday morning podcast then immediately following final battle we're gonna record um, you know our review for that and then you know two days later we got fucking you know TLC so it's like we're gonna have three wrestling pay-per-views within a fucking span of like like 72 hours or just some shit dude stupid what the fuck are we doing with our fucking lives here guys uh so we did see daniel bryan in the miz um i guess found some common um center um in between each other uh I like this segment. I, I like the new Daniel Bryan. I think they're kind of pushing the new Daniel Bryan a little too much, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. I enjoy the the vegan heel character. I think Daniel Bryan is, you know, that's Daniel Bryan, you know. I mean that's this is really who Daniel Bryan is with the fucking, you know, the volume turned up fucking to max, you know, and him him going off on commentary later in the the main event and whatnot here. Um obviously kind of the main uh scuffle that took place here was AJ Styles coming out. Uh he, <laughs> fucking daniel bryan throwing the miz in front of fucking aj styles so aj styles just beats the shit out of the miz like a little bitch and then fucking daniel bryan gets out you know and gets away and shit and like basically hightails in says he's fucking leaving um so we did see randy orton take on jeff hardy next um so jeff hardy and randy orton had uh you know another match on smackdown you know live which again i'm not necessarily complaining because i enjoy fucking jeff hardy and randy orton i think we've very well established that at this point again something you know that we've seen but again you know it's not monday night raw for some reason i'm not fucking annoyed with it you know so i'll watch the match again here the kind of the the, the developing part of the story though was samoa joe appearing on the tri- titantron when uh you know jeff was about to fucking make this giant fucking you know swanton bomb through the announce table which he was never gonna fucking do there's no way everybody saw it, dude everybody saw how fucking far that was like i don't think he's gonna fucking make that there but nonetheless uh it was really fun to see this and um Samoa Joe playing semantics, you know, basically playing on Jeff Hardy's addictions, you know, of um, which I, you know, I know he's been addicted to other things. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was a fucking used some cocaine and used some pills at some point, but you know, w, it's WWE guys, so of course we're not going to exploit any of that. We're just going to exploit the the alcohol problem. So here we are, here we are. So I have nothing wrong to say with Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe. I'm not going to think that the match is going to blow everybody out of the water, but. You know, I like seeing this on my TV in 2018 on a, you know, Tuesday Night Smackdown in the middle of December. No fucking complaints. Uh, we saw our main event, AJ Styles, taking on the motherfucking Miz here. So Styles ended up, you know, defeating the Miz in what was a pretty fun fucking match here. Uh, Daniel Bryan did try to get involved here, but ultimately Styles did tap out the Miz. Uh, the after the after effect, though, was Daniel Bryan just getting this huge beat down on AJ Styles, dude. So uh, really set it up is like, you know, really, really showing that this this uh, heel turn for Daniel Bryan it was, is for fucking keeps, dude. Like this man is he's fucking motivated he's shown it every single fucking week he's on tv so um you know you know tickle me pink motherfuckers but i'm enjoying the shit out of fucking a heel daniel bryan i enjoyed the shit out of how smackdown went off the air uh this past tuesday night and i'm thoroughly looking forward uh to the continuation of this feud here so let's go ahead and boop boop pump the brakes there and now let's move on over to, to fucking ring of honor television which guys were just about a week we're exactly a week away from fucking final battle dude uh which we'll have our our full previews next week i know we kind of went through the card last week but you know i know new matches have been added on both cards i believe so <clears throat> um i think yeah we're definitely gonna have a full uh rundown next week here but nonetheless here we did see uh let's see here Oh, it's that fucking, it's that cough button, motherfucker. Shit. Shit. So we did a fucking stupid. Um, so we kicked off uh, Ring of Honor TV this past week here. It opened with a recap of the double DQ finish from the week prior with the Briscoes and the Young Bucks. Um, this led to Soul Cal and Censored, obviously challenging both teams to compete in the latter war uh, seven at final battle. So that's going to be a fucking amazing match, dude. I cannot fucking wait till next Friday, guys. Uh, so we did see Kenny King make his uh, first appearance 
since basically failing to capture the Ring of Honor world title um, at Global Wars Toronto a couple weeks back there. So we kind of saw the peak is what we had seen. Uh, Kenny King being built up in terms of, um, you know, getting all those wins over the Bullet Club members, Squirrel Page and whatnot. Um, so here we are. And he kind of got the win over Cody Rhodes in a sense, I remember. But it was, I don't think it was really a... Um, <clears throat> I don't think it was a real win. I think it was like a disqualification or some shit. Uh, nonetheless, here, so he takes on Christopher Daniels, and the whole thing is Christopher Daniels, you know, he's 48 years old. Um, he He's really just down to his last fucking chance come final battle, which we saw Marty Skrull on. Um, he was on commentary the whole entire uh, show, so that was actually kind of fun having Marty Skrull sit in on commentary with Ian Riccoboni and Cole Cabana this week. I thought that was really fun. Uh, but we saw Kenny King ultimately beat Christopher Daniels, which we already know Christopher Daniels is ch- challenging Marty Scroll for his uh, title shot against the Ring of Honor World Champion. Future title shot, I should say, that he'd won at some off, uh, you know, Honor Club um, event here in Ohio or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, it was pretty fun, guys. You know, it was it was a well, you know, it, it's a it's a Ring of Honor TV match. You know, so I'm looking forward to their match, the final battle. Kenny King gets the win. Uh, so there's really no direction at this point for Kenny King, but, you know, we shall see what the weeks entail for Mr. King. Uh, we did see a promo with Dalton Castle hyping up his match with Matt Taven. Um, we did see also Josh Woods, which he was the 2017 top prospect winner, actually. So he's back on Ring of Honor champ uh, on TV. And um, then we also did see, yeah, 2018 top prospect fucking Jeff Cobb, dude. So these two had a non-title match here. This is pretty fucking fun here. I like, I thought Josh Woods was a uh, pre, he's got a good look to him, you know, kind of looks like Tom Waller in a sense, you know, but it was good. It was fun. It was, and, and I guess Josh Woods is kind of got an MMA bra- background and whatnot here. And the, 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 the initial grappling phase between him and Cobb, um, I, I think this is definitely a match you, you can definitely, you know, may, it was a short match. It was only three minutes and 48 seconds, but I, I was entertained for those three minutes and 48 seconds. Um, Hangman Page came out, sat down, fucking, uh, you know, watching the match. Then after the match was over, basically came out, cut a fucking promo, told Cobb to get the fuck out of his ring. And then here uh, came Adam Page's opponent. So basically they kind of did this whole, uh, you know, switch off where, you know, Jeff Cobb goes into the fucking, uh, and sits down and watches Adam Page's match against the Neon Ninja uh, Fakata, Fakade with Danny. So apparently he was some local prospect out of fucking, uh, Pittsburgh. It was a fun match. The match only went five minutes and fifteen seconds, dude. But again, I thought this. I thought the build up for these two is it's it's definitely being well done in terms of just you know, hey, I'm fucking better than you. Watch me do this. You know, it's just I like that shit. So uh, definitely, I would say go out of your way to check that shit out if you haven't watched uh, Ring of Honor this week. Uh, in our main event, we did see SoCal and Censored uh, defending the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships against Team, team CMLL which is Guerrero, Maya Jr., and uh, Stuka Jr. as well. Not really familiar with us, anybody really from CMML, CMLL. It's just, I, you know, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to watch every single thing in wrestling. Uh, but Mexican Luchadors is always fucking fun to watch, guys. So it's a pretty solid tag match, I thought, guys. Uh, ultimately, SCU obviously wins, retains their tag, tag team championships. Uh, the end, though, of Ring of Honor Television was kind of like the, you know, the big, the big spot for the show was Christopher Daniels coming out, joining his, uh, you know, his fellow mates, uh, taking the mic, basically, uh, more or less talking about the fact that, you know, his, his, his future is in fucking limbo. Uh, this causes, he, he talks shit with Skrull, basically. Skrull comes into the fucking ring. They have a pretty good back and fucking forth here. And, uh, you know, hey, guys, we're going to fucking see... Christopher Daniels, see what he can do if he can stay in Ring of Honor come next Friday, guys. So that's something I think we're all definitely fucking looking forward to here. Uh, they did promote next week. Uh, the Kingdom is taking on Jay Lethal, Cody, and Dalton Castle. So that should be interesting considering the fact that Jay Lethal is taking on Cody. And then Dalton Castle, you know, obviously is taking on Matt Taven. So looking forward to Ring of Honor TV next week. We'll go ahead and hop into uh, NXT this week, guys. I thought this was a pretty fucking great uh, episode of NXT here. We uh, we kicked off with the debuting Punishment Martinez facing off against, bro, my man, fucking Matt Riddle, guys. I love Matt Riddle, dude. I think fucking Matt Riddle is the shit, dude. He is my fucking new favorite professional wrestler, guys. I'm sorry, but like he's he's taking it. He's fucking taking it. The king of bros. Uh, so he took on Punishment Martinez. And I actually kind of thought Matt Riddle would fucking 
this would be his first loss. I thought, you know, debuting Punishment Martinez, um, you know, don't want to build him up, right? Well, unfortunately for Punishment, uh, his debut is not his night, which, you know, obviously I don't think it really matters in 2018 if he loses his first match. They, they do that shit all the fucking time, and then they build him back up. So it's like, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, I thought the match was pretty fun, though. Again, I'm a fan of Matt Riddle. I'm a fan of Punishment Martinez. And, you know, Punishment, obviously, last time we saw him on our podcast uh, was him losing the uh, Ring of Honor Television Championship to t- uh, Jeff Cobb, <laughs> you know, on a very, very delayed episode of fucking Ring of Honor Television, which... Um, it's good to see Punishment in NXT. I'm glad I'm glad they're using his name. I'm glad he gets to use Punishment Martinez. So I, I will continue to watch uh, Matt Riddle. Obviously, at the end, though, Riddle uh, was going up the, the ramp there. And apparently his uh, his issues with uh, Cassius Ono are not over as Cassius Ono fucking leveled Matt Riddle and knocked him off the stage with a huge fucking forearm. Um, sure, looking forward to that as well. So I look forward to the continuation of the growth of both Punishment Martinez and and Matt Riddle. Uh, we saw Raul Mendoza and Humberto Carrillo versus the Forgotten Sons, which we've seen Raul Mendoza and Humberto uh, before. They obviously were in the, I believe, the uh, Cruiserweight Classic a couple years ago. Uh, they both look like fine prospects, in my opinion. You know, definitely need to keep fucking running the ropes, I suppose. They'll get better. Uh, the Forgotten Sons with Steve Cutler and Wes- Wesley Blake. Uh, I'm not really digging these guys, honestly. I'm not. I'm just going to be honest. I think this is just a, you know, it's greasy fucking gimmicks, <laughs> greasy fucking biker gimmicks, which ironically, I've been reading this Hell's Angels book uh, by the Hell's Angels book uh, that was written by Hunter S. Thompson back in the 60s. So I'm learning about the Hell's Angels. And then I see these guys on my fucking NXT TV this week. And I'm just like, ah, fuck these guys, dude. Fuck the Forgotten Sons. So they get the win, obviously, because they're getting built up. Um, whatever, dude. I'm not really giving two fucks about that. Um, somewhere within there, um, we saw he- a-, a promo with Heavy Machinery. Dude, I'm sorry. These guys are... I- I'm fucking... The stock on these guys has gone up, in my opinion. Just based off this. Like, I saw them a couple weeks ago. You know, when we saw them, like, a month or whatever ago with that little little run-in uh, with Tommaso Ciampa on NXT TV. Um, I-, I enjoyed that match. I enjoyed that pairing. I was like, okay, I see some potential within these guys. It- actually, they have some fun mic skills and shit. And that little that little promo and shit, dude, I, I really got it, dude. I was like, fuck yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So, yo, fuck the Forgotten Sons, but Heavy Machinery, we're going to give the thumbs up to, and we're going to want to... I want to see them face, um, you know, fucking the Undisputed Era. I want to see them face fucking, um, you know, Kyle O'Reilly and fucking um, uh, Roddy fucking Strong and shit. But, uh, so, we also, also did see that uh, segment with uh, the... Um, Undisputed Era as well, giving their uh, thoughts on wrestling at that point. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It was fun. I, I love Undisputed Era. I think all those four guys, I think they need to go up as a fucking unit to the main roster and need to invade it sometime soon. I think after Rumble going into Mania, I don't know, dude, but they need to be on the fucking main roster already. Um, and then we also did find out that War Raiders is what they're well, they're pretty fucked up as well, apparently. So, apparently, they're going to be out. So, I think we may get that heavy machinery fucking, um, you know, um, you know, tag team title shot at the Royal Rumble against the Undisputed Era. I think that's what we're going to see at TakeOver Phoenix. Uh, but, nonetheless, we saw Dakota Kai take on Shayna Baszler here. I thought this was all good shit here. It's continuing to build Shayna Baszler and her, um, you know, they're, they really went hard with calling them the Four Horsewomen, the original Four Horsewomen. So, I don't know. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're going to be building up this uh Shayna Baszler, Ronda Rousey, Marina Schaefer, Jessamyn Duke fucking storyline. I think it's eventually going to take down between, you know, Becky, Charlotte, um Sasha and Bailey cuz they were the you know, the the four horsewomen of NXT or whatever. So, whatever, guys. Uh this this was all good here. It's good to see um you know, uh Shirahi also make her NXT TV debut. She came out to save um came out to save Dakota Kai. Actually, like Dakota Kai kind of fucking grew on me on this. This this segment here, this match was pretty fun. I I this whole episode of NXT TV this week was really fun. And I think you know, and again, it's just kind of more or less your average TV, but at the same time, as high as I was when I watched it, I really did enjoy it. So we did see the main event of the evening was Tommaso Ciampa addressing the NXT universe here. Uh so Tommaso Ciampa hit the ring uh, for the final segment. Basically um, saying that he's the fucking MVP of NXT, this draws the ire of Tommy, Tommy and Aleister Black, 
uh, coming out, interrupting Champa, basically saying that he's undeserving because, you know, fucking Tommy or fucking uh, Aleister Black was attacked. And, you know, this draws the ire of fucking Johnny Gargano. So then Tommaso Champa basically just like, you know, d- continues to poke him because, you know, it's like, oh, no, no, you don't want me. Face fucking Johnny, dude. Like, fuck it. You know, so I thought Tommaso Champa did a really good job in this fucking segment playing the, you know, that little fucking, you know, sticker to fucking set up that match between Aleister Black and fucking. Uh, Johnny Gargano, uh, but ultimately, so we have a a, a, ta- a cage match that will be taking place at some point of Johnny Gargano taking on Aleister Black. Uh, before Aleister Black did go to kick Johnny, but Johnny got the fuck out of the way, retreated up the ramp. You know, looked like a badass. Uh, then Aleister Black took out fucking Tommaso Ciampa off the fucking ramp, off the side of the ring, and that was pretty fun. It was a fun way to end NXT. Uh, Aleister Black standing tall. Um, they announced today that it will be Aleister Black taking on Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT Championship uh, come take over Phoenix in January. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen on TV the next couple of weeks, but apparently that match is announced. So I don't know if they're going to add Gargano. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but solid A to this to this episode of NXT TV. I thought it built storylines pretty well. Kind of somewhat have an, uh, an idea of where we're going towards TakeOver. And ladies and gentlemen... That is the week of professional wrestling. Guys, we've reached the fucking end of this episode. All right, guys. Well, again, next week's going to be really fucking busy as we have Final Battle, we have TLC, and, you know, obviously we have Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and Ring of Honor TV to all fucking cover, guys. So, dude, we're going to fucking get some sleep. You know, we're going to drink some fucking orange juice. You know, got to get that vitamin C, guys, because, dude, we're going to be up and we're going to be fucking rocking and rolling next week guys so dude thank you again for joining us on the totally necessary wrestling podcast we shall see you next time